Hey, what's up guys? Welcome to the channel. If you don't know, my name is Nestor Gomez and this is my channel, Pursue Culture, where the goal of it is, is to flee the world and pursue God by creating culture. So thank you guys so much for clicking on this video. If you don't know, I've been in a series, I began with the last video on identity um, and answering the question of why do we exist? And we talked about that our identity is a son and daughter of God and you find that in 2 Corinthians 6.18. And then to answer the question as to why do we exist, we see that in Matthew 22, 37, where it says, love the Lord, your God with all your heart, soul, and mind. So those are the two main points um, over the entire series. But I understand if you've seen that video and you're coming from a place of maybe this is your first time really hearing that you're a son or a daughter of God, or you've kind of, you knew about it, but you're still learning and, and maybe it opened your eyes a little bit. And you heard maybe for the first time the answer to that question, why do I exist? And it's to love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, and mind. You may be saying, well, you know, I understand that and you said that, but kind of, it, it's not, you know, it's not so much as, okay, you know what, that's it, let's go, let's run with it. Not all the time. And I don't expect you guys, if that's the first time where you're processing through that, to just instantly, okay, you know what, I'm going to take that and I'm going to run with it. Yes, it's possible, and I, and I think you know God can do that. But I know from the fact, from being human and dealing with this myself, that it's a process of learning to live as a son and daughter and, and, and understanding what that really means, right? So I want to go through this video in the next two, explaining three ways as to which we can come to terms with our identity and our purpose here on earth. And that first one is community. So I'm going to be talking about community today and three points as to where in the Bible um, and, and how the Lord can use community to let us walk in that identity as a son and daughter of the risen King. So that being said, the first point is community allows for healing past wounds and current struggles. So this is a beautiful, a beautiful um I would kind of say cheat code to life that the Lord has given us through community. James 5.16 says, Therefore, confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. You see, when you are in the midst of other people who believe the same thing as you and are focused as the same goal as you, you are able to, you know, sharpen yourself, become a better person, talk about things that you've gone through, things that you're going through, right? And through that process of speaking to people who believe the same thing, they are able to reach into those places in your life and show light. You see, our past wounds, even though you may not think or know this, you may say, oh, I've gotten over this, i got over that, you know, that was years ago. If you leave those things undealt with, they remain in you and they can block this new identity of a son and daughter of God, I mean, this purpose of loving, you know, the Lord with your heart, soul, and mind, they can block that. Why? Because these things are hindrances that you don't even, you may not even realize on a daily basis in your heart, in your mind that are still there um, to those past situations. So if you keep those things under lock and key and you is isolate yourself, right? You isolate yourself from others. Those things can't be brought to light and they grow. The longer you keep that, it's kind of like bacteria. If you put it in a moist, dark place, it will grow unchecked into, you know, whatever, a large amount of bacteria. But the moment you go into that area, expose light and begin cleaning, you allow a change to happen in that area. So like this verse is talking about confessing your sins, confessing your struggles, right? Allows for a healing process to begin in your life. So first point. Community allows for healing of past situations, struggles, and current ones as well. So allow people into that. And I know it may be intimidating, but guess what? If we believe the word of God, there is truth to that. That's what this word, the word of God says when you allow others into that area, when you confess to others, healing can be brought through that. The next point is community ushers in the presence of God. Community ushers in the presence of God. This is found in Matthew 18, verse 20, which says, where two or three are gathered, I am there among them. Now, disclaimer, this does not mean that when you are alone praying for a situation that only you know about, that the Lord won't enter in. That's not what this is saying. That's not what I'm saying. But to kind of dive deeper into what this verse is talking about, what we see here is this, and you have to understand this before reading this verse. God at his core is 
a God who seeks community. You see, he is three in one. He is not a singular person. So we see this amazing idea of God being a God of community himself. And it's beautiful because all these three points that I'm going to make intertwine with each other as well. And that's what we're going to see here. Um, so what we see in this is that when you and other people, just like the last verse, you are exposing and talking about things so that when you bring it to God, when you seek his presence, you are all in one accord. You are all on the same page. And what does that do? That honors the same structure of God, where we see God is three, God, the father, God, the son, and God, the Holy Spirit together. You are honoring that template by bringing others in unified in one accord. The Lord will honor that and usher his presence. You know, it even makes sense just logically. Like, why would you rather have one person yourself praying for that one thing when you can have multiple people praying for the same thing? How much of a benefit, when put that way, does it seem? So being in community allows the presence of God to enter into the situation. Not because, once again, not because being alone, you know, God won't hear your prayers. No, but you are honoring the template that God himself has put up of being in community and being unified. And the final one is, and I think one that's really cool, is that community makes your specific calling recognizable. You see, our purpose here on earth, as we've explained many times, and in the last video I've talked all about it, is to love God with your heart, soul, and mind. Okay, we understand that. But there are multiple ways in which you can do that. And one of those ways is by living out your calling and using the gifts that God has given you. You see, 1 Corinthians 12 through 20, 27 is a large passage that talks about this analogy of the body. Verse 12 says, There is one body, but it has many points. But all its as many parts, my bad. But all its many parts make up one body. It is the same with Christ. And then verses 18 to 20 say this God has placed each part in the body just as he wanted it to be if all the parts were the same how could there be a body as it is there are many parts but there's only one body what is this saying that we as believers right as a son and daughter of the lord our god right son and daughters of the king we have been given these gifts to accomplish that goal now we are all different and that's the beautiful thing god has made you unique you're different than me i'm different than you we're different from everybody although we may be the same in many things we are different inherently we have different gifts different skills now when you are alone you are not able to distinguish that as much but when you unify yourself to a youth group to a church to a, an ushers team to a worship team to something else to an adult group to whatever whatever stage in life you're at whatever you attach yourself to when you become a part of something in the kingdom of God in a church now you are able to look okay you know this person's good at this but I'm good at this in which they're not and you can work together towards the common goal and what's that goal glorifying God loving the Lord your God with all your heart soul and mind it all intertwines when you relate to others and stop you know hiding yourself when you when you get out of you know your shell and you expose yourself and not, you know, not just your physical body, but who you are on the inside. Because a lot of times you can be a part of community by going to things, but you don't really let people in and you, you put a hard, you know, you kind of have a, you're, stand, you're standoffish a little bit and people don't really know you. That's a danger we can fall into. But when you allow that real self, who you truly are, to be with other people and enjoy life and be in community, you can realize this is what God has called me to. I can speak, you know, this person can sing, I can't sing, I can play guitar, I can play piano, but I can't play the drums. And it's talking about this verse here in 1 Corinthians 12 through 27. It's saying that, you know, the eye needs the hand and the hand needs the eye. You know, the eye and the hand can't do the same thing or they won't be effective. And that's who we are as sons and daughters in the kingdom of God. And it's beautiful that God has given you something different that I don't have. And I pray and I urge you guys, use your giftings. As I'm trying to use mine here as speaking, I believe God has called me to that. You know, and I know people who they they can't speak, but they can sing. And guess what? I can't sing. And that's awesome. Why? Because God has given them that gift and God has given me this gift. So I encourage you guys to be in community and be a part of something and where you can distinguish and recognize your gift. So these are just three ways in which community, and there are more because community is all throughout the Bible. We find it from Genesis all the way to Revelation. Community, being together, being unified as the body of Christ, being with others. So I encourage you guys, don't isolate yourself. And I know you may be shy, but ask God to give you the strength. 
Ask God to bring people in your life. If, you, if you're in a public school like I was, I prayed, God, give me good Christian friends. And guess what? They came. There are people that I didn't even know were Christian that were Christian. And we get to talk about our faith and grow in our faith. This walk is not a walk that's meant to be um, carried on alone. This is a walk where you are supposed to be with others and grow in Christ. So I encourage you guys to be in community. And the next video is going to be on spending time with God and how that can also help us grow in our identity. So I pray that you guys soak this in, that you really you know, meditate on this. Watch the video again just to understand how community allows us to come to terms with this reality that one, we are a son and daughter of God and that our purpose here on earth is to love him with our heart, soul, and mind. So I pray this was a blessing. Thank you so much for watching this video and I'll see you in the next one. God bless guys.